You know him as one of heavy metal's most recognizable voices, but what do Corey Taylor's former bandmates really think of him? Joey Jordison left Slipknot on what seemed like less than amicable terms, later saying in an interview with Metal Hammer that he was fired via email. He claimed to have been unfairly accused of substance abuse around the time of his dismissal. Jordison was clearly hurt by his sacking, but he moved on to projects such as Vimic prior to his untimely death in 2021. Aside from playing drums on Slipknot's Mate, Feed, Kill, Repeat demo album and their first four LPs, Jordison was also heavily involved in the band's creative process, helping write some of their most recognizable songs. As such, he no doubt knew what he was talking about in a 2005 interview with Face Culture when he explained Corey Taylor's role as Slipknot's primary songwriter. Jordison explained, Corey will have a vision of how the song makes him feel, and he'll adapt that to his emotions and how he's feeling. So sometimes he'll have a bunch of lyrics written that'll fit with our music, or sometimes he'll write them after the song is already done. Jordison also offered some succinct yet noteworthy praise for Taylor's creative abilities. He continued, He usually is his own monster. I'm a big fan of his lyric writing. Before Paul Gray's tragic death in May 2010, Slipknot's bassist was an integral part of the band's rhythm section, as well as one of only three members from the original lineup still with the band. He was also the only one of those three who maintained the same role throughout his tenure with Slipknot. In a press conference held shortly after Gray's death, Corey Taylor paid an emotional tribute to his late bandmate, telling reporters, The only way I can sum up Paul Gray is love. Everything he did, he did for everyone around him, whether he knew you or not. And that's what he's left behind for us, his absolute love. Likewise, Gray was shown giving plenty of love for his bandmates in a clip posted to Slipknot's YouTube channel less than a week after he died. Asked to describe Taylor, the bassist had high praise for the frontman, both as a musician and as a human being. Just one of the greatest human beings I've ever met, you know? Although Jim Root passed on joining Slipknot after he was initially invited to replace original guitarist Donnie Steele, he eventually joined in 1999 as a replacement for another of the band's axemen, Josh Brainerd. Root has been in the group ever since. That isn't the case with Stone Sour, however, as Root was fired from Corey Taylor's other main band in late 2013. Speaking to Guitar World in 2014, Root accused his former Stone Sour bandmates of focusing too much on radio-friendly music, adding, There is at least one guy in the band that's only concerned about money. Those were strong words indeed from a longtime mainstay of Taylor's two primary bands, even if he stopped short of identifying anybody by name. However, Root would clarify years later to Metal Hammer that he and Taylor were getting along much better since his exit from Stone Sour, and that things might have gotten much worse between them had he stuck it out. He explained, Corey and I are much closer now. It's the best thing, me leaving Stone Sour. We would have just ended up killing each other and driving each other crazy. I can't spread myself that thin. While Joey Jordison was keeping time for Slipknot, Joel Ekman was doing the same for Stone Sour playing drums for the melodic hard rock act until he left the band in 2006 to care for his son Isaac. Sadly, Isaac died soon after, but the drummer continued making music, naming his next band after his late son. He often discussed his days making music with Corey Taylor and the rest of Stone Sour in press interviews. Speaking to Pakistan's FM91 in 2013, Ekman responded to a question where he was asked about the moment he knew he was going to make it as a musician. Not surprisingly, he mentioned an early gig where he realized he was working with someone as talented as Taylor. When I heard the crowd and we got done playing, it, we all looked at each other like, wow, this is, this is serious. It took some time for Stone Sour to find a replacement for Jim Root on lead guitar, but in March 2015, it was finally confirmed that Christian Martucci had landed the job. Since then, he has also played guitar for Corey Taylor's solo band. That said, it's probably worth mentioning that before he joined Stone Sour, Martucci wasn't too familiar with Taylor's work or with the band that first made him famous. Back then, Martucci was mainly involved in the punk scene, and he was playing in a cover band at the time that he was first introduced to Taylor. In 2019, he told Everyone Loves Guitar, Our bass player Jason was friends with Corey, and a lot of people probably aren't going to believe this, but I honestly don't care. I had only heard of Slipknot. I didn't know any of the members of the band. Later on in the interview, the guitarist went on to recall the first time Taylor actually jammed on stage with his band and how impressed he was with the frontman's skills. He continued, This guy got up and opened his mouth. 
We did a Black Flag song and I was like, oh my god, this guy sounds awesome, and we kinda struck up a friendship there. Martucci also noted that drummer Ray Mayorka, who would later join Stone Sour as Joel Ekman's replacement, was his bandmate at the time. He added, he must have liked whatever he heard that night because systematically, three of the people on that stage ended up in Stone Sour.